Good morning. Uh, my name is Joseph Brady, and I'm an associate professor with the University of Denver and also with the Colorado Chinese Medicine University. And uh, I'm here to talk to you about some of the research that we've been doing and into whole person health. And so first to explain the concept, the concept of whole person health is uh, a major strategic part of the plan for the National Center for Complementary Integrative Health over the next five years. And the idea is basically that when you study arts like Tai Chi Chuan, um, you're looking at things that provide benefits across a wide range of physiological and psychological functions. So it's really not fair to compare something like Tai Chi in a randomized controlled trial one to one. So for example, if you have somebody taking Tai Chi, for example, for low back pain, and uh, we've got good randomized control trials that show that Tai Chi can help with low back pain, but that underestimates the benefit from Tai Chi in that it also helps the person sleep better and levels of depression are lower and anxiety is lower. And there's a host of physiological functions that improve and also a host of psychological functions that improve with this combination of meditation and physical activity. When you put the two together, you get a whole host, a whole range of benefits uh, across the health of the whole person, in which case just looking at any one outcome measure is underestimating the, um, the value uh, of the activity. And so across NIH, across a lot of government agencies like the VA, it pushes on right now to look at studies that look at the health of the whole person and not just one benefit. So that fits into the research that we've been doing here in Denver in that over the last couple of years, we've been recruiting members of lifelong learning programs and Tai Chi programs and uh, basically doing uh, patient reported outcomes on a wide range of global health issues to see how these activities affect the health of the whole person. The outcome measurements that we're using are strictly from PROMISE scores. PROMISE scores were an NIH common fund uh, project a few years ago to kind of standardize the patient reported outcome survey measures uh, across different fields so that the results would be comparable from one field to another. And so the PROMISE score has been highly validated. And we use um, the PROMISE 29 plus a couple of extras. So we're looking at measures of uh, depression, anxiety, uh, fatigue, uh, pain, physical function, cognitive function, and uh, to see the effect of the activity upon the health of the whole person. We specifically separated out from that 163 practitioners of uh, Tai Chi Chuan uh, that are regular ongoing practitioners. Uh, average age was about 69. Uh, actually, let me go ahead and share my screen and I can give you the numbers more precisely rather than just off the top of my head. Uh, <clears throat> So here's what we were looking at. Uh, again, the whole idea is that successful aging involves the health of the whole person across multiple domains of physical, function, functional, social, and psychological health. Tai Chi has been proposed as a pathway to whole person health, but the extent to which it translates from clinical settings to real world community settings is not well established. That's our research gap, basically. We've got lots of good randomized controlled trials in carefully controlled clinical settings. The Tai Chi works um, uh, for a, a range of, of physical of improving physical function in a range of activities. However, there's not a lot of research to show how that actually works in the real world out in the community where it's actually practiced rather than in just carefully controlled clinical settings. So we decided to look out in the community itself and people that are already doing these activities and um, interventions that demonstrate efficacy in controlled settings may not be effective in real world settings. That's kind of the basis of why we chose that route. Uh, the methods we use a cross-sectional study of 163 older adults practicing Tai Chi and community programs. Average age was 64.7. 
um, and using Promise 29 version 2.1 scores. In addition, we also added functions uh, tests for cognitive function and self-efficacy uh, in a couple of different ways uh, to kind of flesh that out. Anyway, look at basically 10 different domains of whole person health, including physical function, anxiety, depression, fatigue, sleep, social function, pain, cognitive function, and uh, again, like I said, self-efficacy. The T-scores were calculated for physical fun for, for all those measures and compared to uh, both two groups. One is promise scores are calibrated to be compared against the health of the U.S. general population. And so on the chart there, the blue line, for example, on the chart on the left side, the blue line running down vertically is where the average score should be. Promise scores are uh, calibrated so that the average score for the U.S. population comes out at 50 uh, for their T-score. And so anything to the right of that line is healthier than the average population. Anything to the left of that line is less healthy than the general population. Now, understand the general population is basically half the age of the older adults we were studying in this study. And so anything to the right of that line is actually a really good result. The only two that were below that line were anxiety and depression. But remember, these results were gathered during the pandemic and uh, starting with the early first phases of the pandemic and then gathered through it. So it is uh, entirely expected that depression and anxiety would be higher during that particular time frame. We are doing some follow-up follow longitudinal studies to see uh, that that gets better uh, as the pandemic eases and we come out of it slowly. Uh, we also had taken the T-scores and calibrated them so that they all run in a positive direction or in a direction of salutogenesis, a direction of uh, a healthier pathway uh, rather than, for, so for example, uh, a greater physical function uh, is not the same as greater levels of depression. And so we did calibrate the numbers so they would all run in a positive direction. So anything larger, the larger numbers indicated healthier and a movement towards salutogenesis, so the person getting healthier. Uh, lower numbers were movement toward pathogenesis and the person being less healthy. And then on the right-hand side, there's two radial charts that you'll see there that um, are comparing the Tai Chi practitioners to the uh, similar group of older adults uh, in that same cohort of people in lifelong learning and integrative medicine programs out in the community, uh, but that were sedentary. And as you can see, as, as the red line gets further and further out away from the blue line, uh, that's in a direction of salutogenesis or healthier. And so that on every measure, uh, they came out healthier than the people that were sedentary. But again, the important thing is that it was healthier across a wide range of health measures, not just one in particular. Our findings suggest that participants in community-based Tai Chi programs exhibit markers of whole person health that are typical of individuals who are roughly half their age. Tai Chi programs seem to translate well from controlled clinical trials to implementation in community settings and maybe a reasonable path to successful aging that aligns with the interests, beliefs, and philosophical orientation of older adults. Furthermore, the effects of Tai Chi on whole person health were significantly larger in comparison to sedentary older adults out in the community. Uh, we are currently, again, gathering data on a wide range of lifestyle activities. We currently have data on 1,333 older adults participating in a wide range of activities, uh, not just the Tai Chi Chuan, but also Qigong and also um, uh, regular physical therapy and yoga and meditation and uh, a wide range of lifestyle activities. And where we plan to go with this is to use artificial intelligence to then sort through all the various lifestyle factors to see uh, ultimately, hopefully, what motivates people to actually do these things. There's a wide range of these kinds of activities that are already being practiced out in the community. Uh, we need better numbers on how they work and how well they work, but most importantly, on why people choose to do those things in the first place. What is it that chooses someone to live the Tao of a healthy lifestyle? 
What is it that help, that uh, encourages someone to be motivated to actually do the physical activity, to actually do the Tai Chi Chuan and get those benefits that we all know are inherent in these kinds of activities? Uh, that kind of research is essential if we're ever going to understand behavior change. Right now, we've got, and this is a little bit of my soapbox talk, but right now in universities, we've got more information in university libraries on how to keep people healthy as they get older that we already pretty much know how to square the curve, how to enable older adults to live a long, healthy life and then die quickly at the end instead of this long, slow decline into decrepitude. The problem is we already know that information. What we don't know is what encourages them to do it. So rather than looking at why people are not physically active, why people do not live a healthy lifestyle, we decided to study people that are already doing these things out in the community. In this particular study, looking at Tai Chi Chuan practitioners out in the community that have been doing it over a long period of time, and uh, to see what motivated them, what, what kinds of lifestyle behavior changes have they made, what encourages them to do that. So in our survey, we asked a wide variety of questions. And one of the things that seems to come up uh, is uh, enjoyment, that the Tai Chi Chuan is simply more enjoyable than more boring forms of physical activity. And because of its multidimensional nature, uh, people find something that's interesting in the Tai Chi Chuan that keeps them interested over a long period of time. And that may well be the key to behavior change, is offering a wide variety of these kinds of activities and allowing people to choose for themselves what they happen to enjoy. And if they enjoy it, they're more likely to participate in it long enough to get benefits. Anyway, that's the hypothesis that's behind a lot of our research. This is the first step in a, a series of studies that we'll be doing along these lines. And again, we'll be using artificial intelligence on all these data sets to try to uh, eke out and, and, and tease out uh, all of the lifestyle behavior change uh, factors that led people to make the decision and stick to a healthy lifestyle. Uh, so that's all I got for today. Enjoy the rest of the conference, folks, and hopefully that will give you something uh, worthwhile. Anybody wants more information from me, my email is joseph.brady, B-R-A-D-Y, at D-U dot E-D-U. That's joseph.brady at D-U dot E-D-U. Uh, and I'd be happy to correspond with anybody who's got any questions or uh, needs anything else. Thank you very much, folks, and enjoy the rest of the conference.